So we know Assassin's Creed Red is the next mainline Assassin's Creed game releasing most likely this year. And alongside Black Myth Wukong and Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC, Assassin's Creed Red is one of the games I'm most looking forward to this year. And with all the leaks and information released in the past month, what better video to make than this one? We don't exactly know a lot about the game, but we know enough to make a pretty basic understanding of what we can expect. We know it's an RPG game which I'm sure a lot of you would be disappointed in, but I actually like the RPG games which nowadays is probably a hard take. We also know details on the world size, the engine, parts of stealth and so on. So what I want to do in this video is go over 10 features that I'd love to see implemented into Red. Now just a heads up real quick, this video will not mention the likes of improved stealth, combat and parkour, as that's a cop out suggestion to even point out. Of course we'd want the three pillars of this franchise to be executed well, but instead the features I picked out are ones that I personally would love to see. Now I know this is Ubisoft we're talking about and out of the 10 features in this video maybe like one or two will actually be in the game but hey where's the harm in wishing? If you do enjoy this video do consider hitting that subscribe button. I've got a playlist primarily for Assassin's Creed codenamed Red if you want to check out my other videos on this game there. So without further ado let's get right into it. So starting off with the first feature that I feel like needs to be in Assassin's Creed Red is real history. Now what I mean by real history is a game that makes use of what feudal Japan was back then. None of this fabricated made up Japanese folklore stuff that we might see Ubisoft implement. Sure a little bit of fabrication is okay, but not to an extreme extent. I do assume that the most likely time period we'd see for codename Red would be the Sengoku period as that's the same time period that Yasuke's character is based on in real history and we of course know that Yasuke is one of the protagonists in the game alongside Naoi. We also know that the Sengoku period was a period where a lot of war and near constant military conflict occurred. Now as for what I'd like to see in terms of real history in Assassin's Creed Red is for one, real weapons that were used back then. So the likes of the katana of course which is a staple as that's the most iconic and recognized. I'd also love to see the naginata which is a pole weapon with a curved blade at the end often used by samurai. The yari which was a spear also commonly used by samurai and even the likes of the tetsubo which is definitely one of the more brutal weapons from the Sengoku period as it featured a club made of either iron or wood studded with iron spikes and was used to crush armor and bones alike. That's the type of real weaponry that I need to see in Assassin's Creed Red. But it's not just about weapons. Everything from real life historical figures such as Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, Takeda Shingen and a lot more. Similar to how Assassin's Creed Syndicate was full of real life historical figures. I'd love to see Assassin's Creed Red fit in that same boat. We also know that historical events play a massive role in Assassin's Creed since pretty much Assassin's Creed 1 up until Mirage. So I do expect to see Ubisoft's interpretation of Sengoku period historical events implemented into Red. And since since the Sengoku period was full of war, I'd expect a lot of historical events based around that theme, especially the Nobunaga incident where his general betrayed him. So yeah, the first feature, well it's not really a feature, but real history is how we'll start off this video. Let me know what your thoughts are when it comes to real history in Assassin's Creed. Are you all for it or do you just simply not care? Okay so this feature to me might be one of if not the most important part of what makes a story engaging and impactful choices is something that I feel needs to be implemented into the story of Assassin's Creed Red. Now since we of course know the game will be an RPG game this would also mean dialogue choices and hopefully impactful choices. We've seen games like The Witcher 3 and Cyberpunk set high standards for how player decisions can alter storylines, relationships and even game worlds. Oh and it's not a coincidence that both games I just mentioned are CDPR games. You see that's why they're the GOAT video game developers. Anyway it's those types of games that excel not just because of how good the open world is and how good their stories are but because of the depth of choices that the game gives to us. Choices that ultimately carry weight and consequence. For a game like Assassin's Creed Red to have impactful choices, the execution of this needs to be paramount. So I'm putting some pretty high expectations on Pierre Boudreau, the writer of Assassin's Creed Red to implement choices that would alter a storyline whether it's in a side quest or even the main story. To me personally, it's important to have those moments that prompt you to pause and consider your actions thoroughly, especially when a choice is presented. So this next feature that I love to see in Assassin's Creed Red might be a bit of a reach for the likes of Ubisoft, but it's certainly not an outrageous idea and that's simply story driven side quests. Now we've had some relatively story driven side quests in previous Assassin's Creed games. For example there was the Assassin's Creed 3 Homestead characters that have story driven quests related to them, but technically they were not side quests per se, they were part of the settlement. 
There's the murder mysteries from both Unity and Syndica, and whilst they were not exactly fully story driven missions, there were missions that had a crime story to them, where we'd put together a scenario, interrogate witnesses and make your own decisions. What I want to see in Assassin's Creed Red is the same type of side quest presented in a game like Ghost of Tsushima. I've mentioned a few times on this channel that I personally think Ghost of Tsushima's side quests are probably the best in any video game. The stories, the emotional moments and even the exciting moments. There's a lot to them. And the best thing about Ghost of Tsushima's story driven side quests is that they consist of multi-stage quests throughout the entire story. So you could start side quests at the start of the game and finish it near the end of the game at a natural pace. Which is perfect as you'd never feel burnt out. In Assassin's Creed Red, whether it's helping a village defend against bandit attacks, uncovering a conspiracy or even delving into the supernatural aspects of Japanese folklore, each side quest to me should feel like a chapter in a larger story contributing to the understanding of the game world and our place within it. Now I know, we're going to see fetch quests in Assassin's Creed Red. That's a given at this point. It's impossible for Ubisoft to not incorporate them, but I just hope they don't add too many of them. So here's to hoping we get story driven side quests. Okay, so this next feature is one that is 90% most likely not going to be a thing, and that's a minimalistic experience with exploring. I feel like if this was a thing in Assassin's Creed Red, it would be so essential in making you feel immersed in a game's world. To me, this type of design philosophy respects your curiosity and even your intelligence as a minimalistic UI encourages you to explore the world in an organic way, without things on your screen forcing you to go to a certain location. Now once again, the best comparison I can give is Ghost of Tsushima. The way the user interface works in that game is simply incredible. It keeps most HUD elements hidden, unless they're needed. For example, during combat, the necessary information briefly appears. But it's so seamless that you might not even notice the HUD elements popping up when you draw your sword. As soon as the fight is over, the HUD just simply disappears, allowing you to immerse yourself in the game's beautiful world without any distractions. This approach keeps the screen clean and uncluttered, which I believe is the ideal way to experience Assassin's Creed Red. It's it's not just in the HUD that needs to be minimalistic, even the likes of the quest log. Since we know it's going to be an RPG game, main missions, side missions, collectibles and so on will be included in your quest log. So instead of how Odyssey did it, which was a complete mess of a quest log, I love to see Assassin's Creed Red take a simplistic approach and dial down on the amount of text on our screen. The good thing about Assassin's Creed Red is that we know we're getting fewer map markers as the leak suggested, so that's a bonus and a step in the right direction. This feature is a must, and I simply cannot see how Ubisoft can mess this one up, and that's the implementation of an expansive weaponry. I touched on this particular feature earlier in the video very briefly, so I figured I'd expand upon it here. For me, the inclusion of a wide range of historically accurate weapons, from the katana to the versatile naginata and the ninjato, would allow us to truly embody the role of a samurai slash assassin of that time. Each weapon should come with its own unique set of skills, techniques and possible customizations, reflecting the traditions of the period. It goes beyond melee weapons because incorporating ranged weaponry like the Yumi which is a longbow and hell even the Tanigashima which is a gun would add a lot of depth to combat. I have faith in Ubisoft in this aspect as they really mess up the historical additions of certain things. We saw in a game like Black Flag the weaponry of that game fit well for the whole golden age of piracy. Even in the RPG trilogy the weapons were fitting of each era. So Feudal Japan is something that I'm confident they won't mess up when it comes to expansive weaponry. I just hope it's not a case like the new Rise of Ronin game that was released quite recently because the weaponry in that game was so not expansive at all. In fact, it was a lot of the same weapon just tiered into rare, common, legendary and so on. My next point in the video kind of relates to this one, so let's move on to that. Gadgets and Tools Now this is a feature that I love to see get expanded upon quite a lot in Assassin's Creed Red. The reason being is because of how many different types of gadgets and tools can be incorporated into the game from Feudal Japan. Tools like the Kunai and Shuriken could serve as ranged options, allowing for silent takedowns or even distractions. Of course, if you've been paying attention to the leaks, we are supposedly going to be getting a grappling hook tool in codename Red. Now, we don't know much about how it'll work, but we do know that it's similar in style to how Sekiro implemented the grapple hook in that game. I feel like in Assassin's Creed Red, a grapple hook tool would not only facilitate, you know, vertical exploration of the pagodas and the Japanese style buildings, but also be massively impactful during stealth. I can see us using this tool to get above an enemy, and then maybe if the rope dart tool was ever added back into the series, we could assassinate enemies from above. It all links with each other and the opportunities for how we could use these gadgets and tools does seem quite expansive. Now the one thing that excites me the most about Codename Red is hopefully the return of a traditional hidden blade. 
since we know the game is taking place during a time where assassins and templars were actually a thing instead of precursors to them, the return of the hidden blade is something that I can see being implemented. You're probably wondering why I'm saying return even though we saw it in Mirage, but we didn't really see an Odyssey and Valhalla. Well kind of in Valhalla, Ava wielding it on top of their wrist defeats the whole purpose of it being a hidden blade. So that's what I mean when I say return to the original hidden blade. There are also the likes of smoke bombs, sleep darts, poison darts and so on. The usual stuff I hopefully expect to see in a game like Codename Red. Now this feature might seem small on paper, but just having the ability to one hit assassinate an enemy is so important, especially if the game is quite literally called Assassin's Creed. We saw in a game like Assassin's Creed Odyssey that we were not able to instantly one hit assassinate enemies, which for me was a massive downside. Yes we could one hit them with abilities and leveling up certain skills and whatnot, but it's not naturally the same as how it should be. Now I understand this game will feature mythical stuff and of course boss fights. So of course I don't expect to start walking behind a bus and one hit assassinating it as that would just be silly. However for standard enemies and guards there should indeed be the option for a straightforward guaranteed assassination. This feature not only aligns with the core identity of the franchise but also upholds the essence of being an assassin. Who remembers Assassin's Creed 3's homestead settlement? That to me was the peak of settlements in this franchise. Not Villa Auditore, not Great Inagua and definitely not Ravenstorp. Settlement missions are something that I would absolutely love and I mean love to see in Assassin's Creed Red. Thanks to the leaks, we of course know we'll be getting a settlement feature in Red named The Hideout and it does seem pretty expansive. We'll be getting an armory, dojo, altar and a lot more according to the leaks. But what I want mainly is engaging and actually well fleshed out missions with the NPCs at our settlement. In Valhalla, the NPCs in Ravenstorp felt so soulless and lacked any substantial storyline. This just made them feel more like set pieces rather than integral parts of Eivor's journey. And then on the other hand in a game like Assassin's Creed 3, the NPCs at the homestead were all engaging and had their own storyline to them. The game gave us the opportunities to delve into the lives of the settlers, understand their stories and witness how they'd impact Connor's personality massively. For Assassin's Creed Red, settlement missions should be a feature and I'd love to see it draw inspiration from the homestead's success, whilst also learning from Ravenstorp's shortcomings. Each NPC should have a unique backstory and a series of missions that make them feel more alive and part of the narrative. Of course completing these settlement missions could provide us with visible changes in settlements such as new buildings, services or even celebrations. So yeah, am I asking for a lot here? For sure, but if Ubisoft really wants this hideout feature to be a success, they have to add some sort of engaging content within the settlement. This specific feature is something that I only expect to see in a game like Assassin's Creed Red, especially with how the game will make use of quote unquote next generation technology or whatever it is they say. Now I am 90% confident that dynamic weather will be a feature in this game, especially seeing as Insider Gaming reported that it will, but there's a 10% chance inside me that thinks Ubisoft will fuck this feature up. The recent leaks mention the game is going to be utilizing an evolved version of the Anvil engine named the Anvil Pipeline, and this new iteration of the engine is said to benefit everything in terms of animation parkour systems, dynamic weather and a lot more. The league also emphasized on realism and improved graphical fidelity. I want to focus on the fact that the word realism is used and realism is something that's not often associated with this franchise in almost everything. Dynamic weather is the first thing that pops up into my head when I think of realism. The main reason why dynamic weather is incorporated into video games is to make environments feel alive and responsive. It's not just about visual aesthetics, weather can influence gameplay mechanics, narrative mood and player strategy, creating a more unpredictable experience. For a game like Assassin's Creed Red that is set in feudal Japan, this only makes sense, especially seeing as the era was known for its distinct season changes and weather patterns. The best example of a game I can give that makes use of dynamic weather is Red Dead Redemption 2, which features weather systems that affect visibility, character interactions and even the health of Arthur Morgan. Even in The Witcher 3, that game uses its dynamic weather to add depth to how combat would feel, with storms and fog creating atmospheric conditions that can either hinder or help the player. We saw in Assassin's Creed Origins with the sandstorms. That's yet another example of how dynamic weather could affect the game. For Assassin's Creed Red, imagine one moment we walk into the world and suddenly fog caves in. Then we'd see certain yokai appear and attack the player. This doesn't seem like unrealistic expectations, especially knowing that this game will make use of Japanese folklore. 
Okay, this last feature is not really a traditional feature. It's more of a tribute to what I would love to see, or rather hear, and that is simply a beautiful Japanese soundtrack. If there's one thing Ubisoft has never, and I mean never got wrong with Assassin's Creed, it's the soundtrack and OSTs of each game. There is genuinely not a single Assassin's Creed game that I can recall off the top of my head having a bad soundtrack. In fact, the worst is probably an 8 out of 10, which in most games is considered amazing. For Assassin's Creed Red, a beautiful soundtrack is a necessity. This might sound pretty cringe, but music to me in video games has the power to transport you across time and space, enveloping you in the world on the screen, and it has the ability to heighten every action, emotion and scenic view that you'd encounter. Think about it, would that iconic Ezio and Federico scene hit the same if the Ezio's family soundtrack was not playing? Absolutely not. Would each intro title hit the same if the music was different? Absolutely not. So that's why I consider soundtracks to be so important in video games. Now I'm going to throw this out there before the game is even released. I can genuinely see Assassin's Creed Red soundtrack to be a top 3 in this entire franchise, or maybe a top 5, simply because Japanese music was so distinctive, the melodic structures, the different instruments used, I can just see it being a 10 out of 10. Imagine exploring the streets of Kyoto and hearing bamboo flutes and ambience being played in the back, that would just make the experience 10 times better, and then during those intense battles or chases, the rapid beats of taiko drums could add to the adrenaline, making your heart race in sync with the rhythms. So yeah, sorry if I geeked out near the end of this video, but I'm pretty passionate when it comes to the soundtracks in video games. This is slightly off topic, but just take a listen to a song named Feel in Lies of P. That's what I'm going to say. So there you have it, those are 10 features that need to be in Assassin's Creed Red. A lot of them are personal requests and I cannot really see Ubisoft incorporating them such as settlement missions or one hit assassinations, but I'd love to see every feature in this video get included into Assassin's Creed Red. Let me know what your thoughts are in regard to my list, what features do you want to see implemented that are not mentioned in this video. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and with that said, I'll see you in the next one.